Hi, today's video is all about baking normal maps in Blender. I'll show you example and test I've been making, which should help you troubleshoot and fix common problems in your bakes. I'll assume you already have a good understanding of normal maps and shading, as this is an intermediate level tutorial. In this first test, uh, our ray distance is set to 0 meters. The normal baking process is pretty straightforward. Rays are casted inward from the low poly model. Uh, inwards means the opposite of the split normal direction, which are shown as pink lines here on the model. So if I were to uh, trace the inward rays, it would look like this. Once the rays intersect with the eye poly model, the resulting normal information is baked to a texture, our normal map, here on the left. In the second example, the ray distance is still set to zero. Remember to use a bevel for pretty much any edge on your eye poly as any face perfectly parallel to the direction of the rays just won't show in your bay. So here I don't have any bevel, and because those faces are uh, parallel to those lines, uh, I don't get any uh, normal information over here. Now if you were to invert the model's location by having the high poly on top of the low poly, uh, with the ray distance set to zero, the rays wouldn't intersect with the eye poly, which result in a flat normal map. No details have been baked. Again, that's because rays goes inward, not outwards. Now our ray distance is set to 2 meters. By increasing the ray distance, we effectively offset the ray starting point by that distance. The rays still travel inwards, but they start 2 meters above the low poly geometry which means at this time they will intersect with the high poly geometry. So really, ray distance should only be used if your low poly isn't fully surrounding your high poly. So in this example, uh, rays instead of starting from this point will start 2 meters above, so about here, and go inward, which will intersect with our high poly, as shown in the texture. Here I've rotated the low poly, just to illustrate the importance of the normals. As you can see, only a fraction of the rays intersect with the high poly. We can also see that from the point of view of the low poly, the high poly is at a steep slope, resulting in this vivid purple color on the bake over here. So if we were to draw the rays here, it would look something like this. And you can see they intersect about here with the model. So we only get that part of the resulting uh, information. Now in this example, the ray distance is back to zero meters. We will now show the high poly as a green color for clarity. Here you can see I've added a plane to the geometry of the high poly. This further illustrates my point that the rays going inward means that they won't intersect with anything above the low poly model. So the ray just go and intersect with this part of the high poly and the flat surface is ignored. Now with the ray distance set to 2 meters, rays intersect with a flat plane above the low poly model and stop traveling inward after that. This shows that once a ray hits geometry, it's not going to try to find more geometry. Ray distance is still set to 2 meters. This means that you can stack geometry on your high poly to generate the normal map information you want. As you can see, I have this little piece in the middle. And because uh, the rays uh, don't find any geometry um, over here and over here, uh, this part of the mesh gets baked. But because in the center it intersects with a small part, um, this part gets baked too. But if I add anything in the center of this part, it wouldn't get baked. This is just another example of stacking uh, geometry. Keep that in mind for your future hard face model. You can uh, just have floating geometry on top of one another to add some details. As you can see, Susan gets properly baked. In this example, you can see we get a seam in the normal map, even though the sculpted details should flow continuously across the edge, as seen here. This is because we are missing the top part of the high poly when projecting rays, because we follow uh, these pink lines, which represent the split normals. And because our model is shaded flat, the rays will um, go perpendicular to our uh, low poly faces. And that's where smooth shading and cage enter into play. Remember, the rays are projected in the direction of a pink line, which represents the model split normals. The blue lines here at the top uh, represent the 
interpolated normals. It can also be called vertex normals, uh, which are just uh, an average of our split normals. That's the direction the rays will be projected if uh, you use smooth shading on your low poly model. Now I've added a cage in red. Uh, rays are now casted from the cage to the low poly model. So effectively a cage is like using a ray distance superior to zero, uh, but with more control over the distance and the direction of the rays. Uh, it's crucial to understand that each vertex on the cage corresponds to a vertex on the low poly model. And we now get a proper bake as the vectors between the cage vertices and the low poly vertices dictate the directions of the rays. The top part isn't cut off from the bake anymore, as you can see. And if I were to draw the rays, it would look something like this. Going back to our initial example, but using a cage this time, you can see by shrinking the cage, I get this resulting normal map. And if I were to draw the rays, it would look something like this. And if I make the cage bigger, I get this result. Going back to our edge problem, I can also use smooth shading without using a cage, which gives us this result. You can see the top part isn't missing anymore, which is good, but we get those harsh gradients on the parts that are supposed to be flat. This won't look good. So I'm talking about these gradients over here. And you can see on our model, um, the smooth shading doesn't really work with this low poly model. Now we can fix this without using a cage, but at the cost of extra geometry by simply adding a bevel at the top of our low poly, as seen here, giving us this much better result with no weird gradient over here. And here you can see a representation of the direction at which the rays would be casted depending on the, the geometry and uh, if uh, it's set to smooth or flat. And obviously you can uh, mix those depending on your needs. Don't hesitate to pause the video here or go back to the previous example if it doesn't make sense. Also, I would suggest watching Deconstructing a Normal Map by CG Cookie to get a solid understanding of how smooth and flat shading change the direction of the shading normals. Now when you try to bake an object that has geometry too close together or actually intersecting, you will get some problems when you try to bake your normal maps, as demonstrated here. And uh, an easy way to get rid of them is by exploding your object. Now by se separating the parts that are too close together or intersecting, we get a good bake at the end, as shown in this texture. If you want to go further into baking normal maps for video games, I'd suggest reading those three tutorials on polycon.com. The tutorials are pretty old and not aimed at Blender specifically, but still extremely relevant um, for us.